In this example, we look at the normal distribution approximation and hypothesis test for two proportions. We saw in the last example, after many runs, the sampling distribution for the difference in proportions between men Democratic voters and women Democratic voters takes on a shape close to normal. Recall that we are interested in the difference in proportion of men and women voters who respond very well or somewhat well to the poll question. So here's our poll question. How well do you think the current candidates in the Democratic presidential primary reflect the Democratic Party? And these are the responses from the survey of 500 voters. So the voters are broken down between men and women voters, and then the responses, whether they responded very well or somewhat well in the first column, and those who responded not very well or not well at all in the second column. Our first task is to check to see if a normal model is a good fit for the sampling distribution. So we remember that this is true only if the expected number of successes and failures in each sample is at least 10. Since we're counting the very well or somewhat well response, then that's what we consider to be a success. And then the failures would be the other responses in the second column. So you could go through calculating the sample proportions and multiplying those by the sample size. Um, we don't know anything about the population, so we would use sample proportions here. But we know from the table, we can actually see the counts in each group. So we don't even have to go through those calculations of the sample size times the sample proportion because those values would just work out to be the counts. Um, so from the table, the count in each group we can see is more than 10. So we know the successes, which would be the values in the first column for the men voters and women voters, and the failures, which would be the values in the second column for the men voters and women voters, are more than 10. So the conditions are met to use a normal model. So if you have a table of the responses, all that you need to do is check that your success is what you're counting, and then all the other data, your uh, failures in statistics language, are each more than 10. So we are able to use a normal model, so let's move forward to setting up a hypothesis test. Our first step in the hypothesis test is always to determine the hypotheses. So we are going to write the null and alternative hypotheses for this claim that the proportion of men Democratic voters who respond very well, that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party, is different from the proportion of women Democratic voters who respond very well that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party. People who do market research and advertising uh, and run campaigns for different candidates would want to know this information because it might change how they do their marketing or what they ask their candidates to talk about when they're out on the campaign trail because they're trying to uh, court different voters to get their vote and make sure that they get all the demographic groups. So the null hypothesis always has equality. There's two different ways we could say that. We could say proportion one equals proportion two, or we could say, well, if they're equal and we subtract, we should get zero. So we could write it the second way, proportion one minus proportion two equals zero. It does not matter which way you write it. I tend to write it uh, the first way with the proportions equal. When we go into StatCrunch, StatCrunch writes it the second way. Um, you'll see it written both ways in different textbooks. It's an equivalent statement, whether you say that two proportions are equal or that when you subtract the proportions, you get zero. Um, it's important to make sure we're defining which group is proportion one and which group is proportion two because that'll influence the inequality in the alternative hypothesis. So here I've said uh, proportion one, P1 is a proportion of all men Democratic voters and P2 is a proportion of all women Democratic voters. And then in this case, we're just testing to see if there's a difference. We haven't said greater than or less than. So our alternative hypothesis uses the not equal sign. So you could say uh, for the alternative hypothesis, proportion one is not equal to proportion two. Or for the alternative hypothesis, you could say proportion one minus proportion two is not zero. We want to make sure the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are competing. We don't want them to be in a situation where they could both be true. And when we look here, we see uh, you could not simultaneously have equality and not equality, so we are in good shape with our competing hypotheses. Down here in part C, we're asked to explain if the hypothesis test will have a left, right, or two-tailed p-value. Since the alternative hypothesis has the not equal to inequality, the hypothesis test will have a two-tailed p-value. It could be that 
proportion one is less than proportion two, or it could be that proportion one is greater than proportion two. So remember, typically we write our hypotheses and then go collect data. So you wouldn't know um, what kind of results you're going to get in your data when you write your hypothesis test when you're designing your study. In this case, we've been working with this data in a previous example, so you've already seen it. But typically, as a researcher, you would write your hypotheses test and then go collect some data. Uh, we previously calculated uh, the difference in sample proportions, P1 hat minus P2 hat. So here's that calculation again. Um, P1 hat is 192 over 240, and P2 hat is 198 over 260. And when we subtract those fractions, we get our difference is 0 0.038461, so between 3 and 4% difference, we'd say. And then we're going to let StatCrunch do the standard error calculation. Here's the formula. Uh, it's given in your vocabulary section. It's a messy formula, so you can see uh, this is the estimated standard error because we don't have the population values. So you can see here that uh, we would put in side the root the proportion one sample proportion multiplied by one minus the sample proportion for group one divided by the sample size for group one and then we add it to the same calculation for uh, group two for the sample proportion for the second group the women voters in this case and I plugged in all the values in the root so you're welcome to grab a calculator and uh, work this out you want to maybe write down your calculations as you go I'm going to let StatCrunch do it for us we get to a point in statistics where we're more likely to make a mistake trying to do a formula by hand than if we just outsource it to StatCrunch. And you have showed people in previous math classes that you can subtract and multiply and divide and add and square root. So I don't need you to document those calculations for me every time. It's okay to be efficient and let StatCrunch do this for us. So we are going to go into StatCrunch and have StatCrunch do the estimated standard error calculation for us and calculate the um, difference in the proportions and the z-score and where it would fall on the normal distribution. So to find the z-score, StatCrunch is going to take this difference in proportions and then divide it by uh, the estimated standard error because we're testing to see if there's no difference. But we're going to let StatCrunch do that math for us. So we're going to go into stat, proportion stats, two samples, and then we're going to do with summary because we already have the data. Here's a screenshot of how you're going to enter our hypotheses. So let's go do that together. In StatCrunch, I'm going to open a blank StatCrunch. And then go to stat, proportion stats, two samples, and then with summary since I already have my information. And then sample one is the men, so that is 192 over 240, where 192 are those who responded very well or somewhat well, and 240 is the total male voters. And then for women voters, our successes, or the women who responded very well or somewhat well, is 198 over 260 total women voters. Now, by default, StatCrunch sets the difference in proportions at zero. We are only going to test zero difference in proportions in this introduction to statistics class. A researcher might be checking some other difference in proportions, but we are going to do no difference for our um, two proportion hypotheses test. So you just leave the zero in here, and then we choose the inequality that matches. So for us, we're using the not equal to inequality. And then we scroll on down, and to get the p-value plot, you check in this little box here, p-value plot optional graph. It's not necessary to get the p-value plot, but I like to see it. So then we hit compute, and here are our results. So you can see the sample difference matches what we did by hand. Here's a standard error that StatCrunch calculated using the formula. And then here's the z-stat and the p-value. If we scroll over to look at the p-value plot, we see it's two-tailed, what we expected, because we used the not equal to inequality. And our p-value is right around 0.30. So if you looked at the simulation example, we got really close results. I think we had 0.32 uh, in the simulation with the applet. And then our z-stat is 1.0372, so right around one standard error. And we can see that visually with the red lines here are right around one standard error below and above the center of this distribution.
The Z-stat's also called the Z-score. It just depends on which text you're looking at. So let's head back to our notes. So we want to record our Z-stat and p-value from StatCrunch. It's not necessary to write down the standard error, although you're welcome to. And then we're going to do some analysis. So remember that the Z-stat, also known as the Z-score, is a count of how many standard deviations the statistic is from the center of the distribution. Based on the z-score and the normal distribution plot, does the statistic seem significantly far from the center of the distribution? So the z-score is around one standard error from the center of the distribution. It was exactly 1.0372 standard errors apart. So this is not unusual. Remember, we need to be more than two standard errors or two standard deviations away from the center of the distribution for us to be in what we think of as unusual territory. Uh, we're talking standard errors because we're using sample data. Standard deviation is the term we use when we know the whole population. And sometimes you'll see I um, will say standard deviation when I mean standard error. So uh, sometimes we say one when we mean the other. But we would want to talk about standard error here because we're looking at sample data. But the ideas are very close. So part G says, does the p-value from this hypothesis indicate that the difference between the proportion of men Democratic voters who respond very well, that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party, and women Democratic voters who respond very well, that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party is statistically significant? So we're thinking about, okay, is this difference far enough out that we think it's a significant difference, or could it have happened by chance? So the p-value is above the 0.05 significance level. So that difference is not statistically significant. If we go back into StatCrunch, we see we're not in unusual territory here looking at our distribution. We are within one standard error, and we've got um, more than 5% in the tails of our distribution. Um, and then they ask us about how does that compare to the sampling distribution in the previous video example. So we got right around 0.29 and 0.30 in this example. When we did the sampling distribution, we had around 0.31 to 0.32. So the p-values are very close. So we can say the p-value is close to the proportion calculated in the sampling distribution in the previous example. If you remember the sampling distribution graph, it was close to normal. In the stat crunch graph we're looking at right now, it's a perfectly smooth normal model. So the smoothness of this curve accounts for the difference between this and the randomly generated values we got in the histogram, but very, very close. So now our last step is to state a conclusion. We say here, since the p-value is above the significance level alpha equals 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that's the first thing we need to say in our conclusion, but then we need to explain what that means in terms of these men voters and women voters responding very well or somewhat well to this question. So we say there's not enough evidence to conclude there is a difference in the proportion of men Democratic voters who respond very well, that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party, and women Democratic voters who respond very well, that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party. So we're looking at this difference in men voters and women voters. So since we don't have enough evidence to conclude there's a difference, it could be that men and women have uh, equal opinions about the candidates reflecting the Democratic Party.